Welcome back, Legends. We have returned once again to DC London Tomorrow Season 7 because we are now back finally after our mid season break. Uh, last episode was in, I think, December, maybe it was November. I don't even remember. It was, it was a long time ago. Now we finally have returned with brand new episodes of DC London Tomorrow Season 7 with Episode 8. And of course, we also just got a brand new episode of Batwin Season 3, uh, which, as you may know if you check my uh, community tab, I did do a poll asking which you'd prefer a review and breakdown of London tomorrow or Batwoman I will do the other one at some point which of course is going to be Batwoman uh, but that won't be out until tomorrow because we've also got the debut of the first three episodes of Peacemaker on HBO Max this morning so I'm gonna be super busy with that so I just don't have time to do all three of those shows so Batwoman review will be coming tomorrow just gonna have to stay tuned for that uh, but today we are talking about DC's London tomorrow season 7 episode 8 of course spoiler warning if you've not seen this yet uh, but let's go ahead and get into this um, so this episode of course picks up after some really interesting cliffhangers of the last episode which by the way I didn't even do a video on but um, it, it was an all right episode until the end where it got like super good and like had a bunch of big reveals and stuff uh, where basically the reveal was that the ones piloting the wave rider that destroyed the other wave rider and basically set this whole season in motion it was the cliffhanger of last season was the legends but android versions of the legends of tomorrow so this whole episode is literally the androids of tomorrow we don't even have our actual regular real legends of tomorrow in this episode except for like background stuff so this whole episode stars the android legends and we even start off the episode with a recap from the Android Legends from their perspective, and they think that they're the real Legends and that the other Legends, the real ones, are the Androids. So, of course, they have no idea what's going on here. Um, so, I do like that we kind of get to, uh, they, they kind of do a redo of the events of the ending of last episode, uh, but through the perspective of the Androids. Where, of course, the Android Legends, they infiltrate uh, the Seattle, where the real Legends are celebrating their win. And so, then you've got a whole bunch of stuff going on here. Um, as for the Androids, Zari and Astra end up dead. They're like, oh, men down and all this stuff. Um, Bishop also sacrificed himself, uh, which was pretty cool, but also sad at the same time. And the real Legends are, of course, able to escape. So... The Android Legends throughout this episode are searching for the real Legends and trying to stop them. And I love how we actually get a really cool, like, special edition intro card title thing for this episode where it's, like, starring the Android Legends and shows the different versions of these characters. I thought that was really a, a cool, nice addition here. Uh, but things get interesting, though, because these characters, um, I didn't expect to care about them all, but you actually end up caring about them. Because, first of all, like I said... Zari and Astra are dead, those android versions of the characters, but now they have somehow been revived. And they kind of make it seem like, alright, Dr. Sharp, which is the android version of Ava, even though she's technically a clone as well, but, you know, this version of Ava, she, they, they make it seem like, alright, she was somehow able to fix them up, surgery or whatever, and basically revive them and bring them back to life. But, as it's revealed later, actually turns out she did not bring them back to life. She actually incinerated their bodies and just created clones of them. So just, you know, they die, just make some new ones, I guess. And so again, throughout this episode, the Android Legends, they think they're the heroes. They think they're the ones that are trying to hunt down the other Legends. So throughout this episode, they basically try to do the opposite of what the real Legends are doing. So they're searching for the real Legends, and the real Legends are, of course, off saving people who, in the original timeline, were supposed to die. So the Android Legends are making sure that they do die, which is kind of a thing that can go back and forth because, like, from one perspective, it makes sense to, like, make them die because like them being alive could really affect the timeline in a really negative way and cause ripple effects and stuff but then then again at the same time just like knowing they're gonna die and letting them die is like super messed up as well and that was one of the big conflicts explored i don't remember if it was last episode or the episode before but that was a big concept explored there and so anyway, during one of these battles, uh, Sarah ends up getting injured. So she goes to the med bay and she then gets all fixed up by Dr. Sharp. She operates on her. And this is where 
Sarah starts to get a little suspicious of like what's going on you're like how is my arm already good and like what's wrong with it like it was just a scratch why do you need to do surgery and all this stuff so she's super confused she's super suspicious so she enlists the help of Zari who is a super hacker this version of Zari is a super hacker and so they do some research together and find out the truth that they are the androids and the other legends are the real legends and Zari even finds like these files of the real legends that Dr. Sharpie used to create the Android legends. They also find out that Gideon is really the one that actually programmed Dr. Sharp and really is the one behind all of this. So they kind of try to save the day here. Um, Sarah tells the rest of the Android legends the truth and they're like, oh, wow, really? That's crazy. And like, you know, we're on your side and everything until Zari is about to shut down Gideon, but then is persuaded with the incentive of a better brain slash CPU. And now all the other legends side with Zari and Gideon. They all turn evil again and basically turn against Sarah, who is still resisting. So Nate becomes the new captain and Sarah is just dragged away to the infirmary and now Next time we see her is when she actually comes out just evil. She is just a pure evil assassin now and actually ends up killing the doctor lady that earlier in the episode she actually saved. So she is just a mindless assassin now, which is actually really cool and really fitting for the character of Sarah Lance. So to see that kind of version of the character thought is really cool here. And now we're getting that in action, but I'm interested to see, especially next week's episode, how we're getting back to the actual real legends, um, how we're going to deal with that. And what if maybe she's redeemed and teams up with the real legends? I don't know exactly what's going to go on here, but don't worry guys that is not the end of the episode though. That's the big cliffhanger. But after this, we actually get like a, a really funny, like, I think it was supposed to be like an anti-bullying commercial or something like that with Buff Boy Citizen Steel. So that was a really funny moment to end off the episode. Um, and that that was it. So that was the mid-season premiere of DC's London Tomorrow, Season 7, Episode 8. Um, a really solid episode. Really excited to see where things go in the rest of the season. Uh, I don't remember exactly how many episodes there are this season. I feel like it's around 15-ish. I feel like that's the average for Legends Tomorrow. I don't know for sure. Uh, but we'll definitely have to wait and see how things go from here. So, anyways, guys, again, stay tuned for that Batwoman review and check out my Peacemaker review and all that stuff. But for now, guys, thanks so much for watching. Please drop a like if you enjoyed this video and hit the subscribe button so I can keep it to date on episode.